y'all, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome! Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. In today's episode, we're going to start putting it all together. If you've seen any of my previous episodes, we talked about different tools, different layers, blending modes, masks, all that good stuff. We're going to put it all together and see what a real-time workflow looks like. I'm going to use the example of something that's one of my favorite things to work on, which is photo restoration. Let's get started. All right, so I have these two images, um, a husband and a wife, and I went and did a file place to get this on my document. And as you can see down here, it's got the file count size. We've got the husband and the wife. And we're going to work on the husband first. If you can see, I've got the layers placed. So we're going to go over to the dad first, and we're going to make a duplicate layer. So you can see I'm zoomed out all the way to fill the frame. I'm going to zoom in using Control or Command and the rolly wheel, or I can use Control or Command Plus to zoom in. I'm going to use the alt key to go side to side, hold the alt key and then you can use the wheel on your mouse to go side to side. You see here I'm at uh, about 160%. I do want to be about 300% for my beginning edits. I'm going to go in and find the adjustment areas that I need to make, just the cosmetic adjustment areas, the little dust and scratches, and typically about 300% uh, based on what the price point for this restoration. That's how deep I'll go into it for 300%. If I'm wanting an intense adjustment, then I'd go in a little bit further, but that would of course reflect on the price to my customer. But as you can see, I'm just going around here and I'm taking an overall look to see what we've got going on before I start on the image. You see a few creases, a few wrinkles, a few dust particles, a different mismatch coloration. I'm just going to go through and square by square zoom through my image using the clone stamp. You can also use the uh, spot healing brush tool if you would like. I prefer the clone stamp when I'm using adjustments on my backdrop. Remember to hit the alt key to make your selection and just go through your image and remove your small dust. I go square by square. Helps me kind of keep track as I go through the area of the image. Select about an inch or two away from your item that you're going to be stamping to get rid of those dust particles. Remember to use your Alt or Option key to select that area that you want to use. So you're just going to move through the image, Alt to select your place that you want to copy from, and then just use your brush key for your clone, for your clone stamp to make those adjustments. Be mindful to look around to find discoloration, maybe it got a little sunlight, maybe it just had some errors or some issues that you need to balance out that color. Just go through and find the large spots that need to be adjusted. Try to train your eye to look for things that don't quite belong. We're just going to move level by level, square by square through the image and make sure that our adjustments are clean. See the little plus sign next to the brush identifier on the clone stamp is telling us where that clone is coming from. This is a great tool as well to refine your edges as you saw on the hairline. This photo was taken when you had to sit for a long time for an image so using this clone stamp like this is really great to refine the edges especially around the hairline. If you get any blur from extra movement while that person was sitting for that photo. And you can be very meticulous or not meticulous if you don't want to. If you're finding your lines are a little harder, do make sure on your brush tool located next to the clone stamp tool under the file window, changing it to the airbrush mode so that you don't have hard edges. Continue to scroll down to refine your edges along his face as you move through the image. Every once in a while you can change where your clone selection's from just to make sure that you're not doing too many repetitive patterns. I know that the backdrop does look like it is just a blank background and how could it be repetitive, but 
you'll notice tones and textures being repeated and it'll, it'll give away your manipulation. We'll move across the image. When you get to the content off the backdrop and onto the content of the image, do be a little more mindful with your adjustments. Go a little bit slower. You don't want to adjust the actual face shape. You may need to reclone stamp and pick various locations to choose that stamp from. See the little target pop up when I'm selecting a new location to clone. Do remember Control Z and Control Alt Z will continue to step backwards. Control Shift Z will step you forwards if you need to see, well, do I like that adjustment? Do I not like that adjustment? And you can step forward and backwards with Control or Command Z or Command or Control Shift Z to step forward. Balance out the shades and the colors of his face. Just be careful not to change the shape of his face. Your client will know if you change the shape of their loved one's face. As I said earlier, you can go as detailed or as broad stroke as you like with these adjustments. It's going to take care of all of the small dust and scratches as you move along the canvas. It does take a little time to do this first step, but it does make everything a lot easier as we move on to our next step. Make sure to not trace over yourself or you will copy your copy. And that's not what we want to do. Sometimes to zoom out will give you a little bit more perspective on what you're working with. We'll zoom back in to make sure that we're stamping from the correct area and we're going to get the correct correction. So to get rid of this crease, we'll need to be very careful where we stamp from to not get that repetitive stamp look. Zooming in and out, get perspective. So we'll need to make a few adjustments here. Maybe a smaller brush would help. Be careful in the wrinkles and folds of the uniform. You don't want to tell on yourself. You want it all to look clean and authentic. Try to do color matches. You can also use your clone stamp at a lower opacity, hitting enter to select your opacity intensity and decreasing your opacity amount to instead of using direct hard lines, it will more use a color suggestion. So it will grab the opacity intensity at only 50% to make your clone. So by grabbing the lighter brown and moving it to clone stamp over on this darker brown area that is deteriorated by pixelation, can even go a little bit lower. Using the enter or return button is a great way to streamline your workflow in order to choose your opacity a little higher or a little lower. This will not only grab the texture, but the color as well. Be careful not to add unnatural highlights and shadows with this technique. You want to keep the creases and the clothing the same. The background probably seems way easy now that we're done working on the clothes. Continue moving through. Do you know we're still on 20%? You may need to make sure that you're on 100% again or even 50%. The clone stamp is great for creating content where content may have been lost, such as in a photo restoration. You can also use your eyedropper tool to do a quick color select. Then using your brush tool at a lower opacity, add color in the tone and the hue matching another location of the image and then you can return back to clone stamp. So by coupling your clone stamp with your opacity, you can make color corrections, texture corrections, depending on where you do your sample clone stamp from. You can also add shadows and highlights where shadows and highlights may have been lost. Using your clone stamp at a lower opacity will also enable you to make adjustments to the pixelation 
as we see here on his shoulder patch, there's a lot of other detailed lines that we don't want to lose. So by sampling areas of those detailed lines, you can create areas of those detailed lines that might be lost. So by sampling an upper level of the shield, we're able to correct a lower level of the shield, matching textures to recreate on other areas. We can use our eyedropper tool if we need to be a little bit more precise and we can't get the look we exactly want. Make sure to find the correct color. Use your brush. Bump up your opacity. Make your brush a little bit smaller to fit the line you want and make the correction. Clone stamp again. By keeping your opacity lower as well, you can make multiple brush strokes to create 100% with an opacity of 20% by clicking five times. But it's easy to change your opacity if you need to by hitting enter or return. Do more dust scratches, do more pixelations, just smooth out. Post-production takes patience, y'all, and how deep you want to go into it. That's why we're at 300%. If we were at 600%, this would be a much more intense workflow, but at 300%, you can usually get the majority of the adjustments that are noticeable to the naked eye taken care of. With practice, you'll get the technique down of where to sample from and where to copy. Now, when you're working with buttons, you wanna make sure to hold the integrity of the roundness of the button. Remember in our previous tutorials to increase or decrease your brush size, you're going to use the bracket key the bracket key to the right will decrease your brush size. The bracket key to your left will increase your brush size. As we go through, we'll make our final last few adjustments to the dust and scratches, the pixelation and the small adjustments. I always start my restoration adjustments and even my photography adjustments with the clone stamp manipulation. One layer and I can see my difference click on and off the eyeball, and we can see what we've done. Really cleaned up the photo. We do have a few other things we want to do. This client does want this photo colorized and the collar, of course, fixed. So let's move on to color correction and adjustments. We did our clone stamp adjustments in our last portion, so now we're going to work with a few adjustment layers to make some basic edits. First and foremost, brightness and contrast. We're going to boost our brightness just a little bit because we want it to eventually match the whites. So we're going to find some middle ground. I'm going to boost their contrast just a little bit for our midtones, highlights, and shadows. Remember we learned that if you hit the Alt or Option key, it will white out the area so you can move your lever until just about the blacks come through. I'm going to skip over curves and exposure and go straight to vibrant. I want to make it a little bit more vibrant. I know it seems awful yellow right now. So we'll decrease our saturation. A little bit of color balance layer because we're now getting in the good stuff. What we want to do with this color balance layer is you're going to invert the mask because we just made that green adjustment. And we want to make the outfit he's wearing into that army green uniform. So we'll do the quick selection to select him. Just click to select. And then to deselect, hit your Alt or Option key and deselect the areas you do not want selected. You can zoom in and zoom out if you need to to make those adjustments with your Control or Command Plus if you need to get a little closer look. But just select the areas that you want to apply that color balance correction to. Now remember, white to reveal, black to conceal your mask. So we're gonna make sure that our swatches are on white and black. Select B for brush. I'm going to set my opacity a little bit lower. And we're going to make these corrections to do a color adjustment on his uniform using the color balance adjustment layer. Brush, swatches, your mask is inverted. 
Our opacity is set at 5%, so it's going to be a slow transition. But I find that makes it a little bit more manageable so that you can give a realistic look exactly the way we want. So Now remember we are white to reveal and black to conceal. I want to conceal these patch areas because these patch areas we're actually going to make gold. So we're going to paint on the black color to conceal the mask. To bring out the yellow in the patches and eventually the buttons as well. Keeping selected on we're going to actually change into a color balance adjustment as well. We want to get the yellow buttons as yellow as possible. So we're going to clear off that mask, conceal it with the black brush, and then we're going to reveal the buttons. See how they pop out yellow? Because that color balance adjustment we made was to bump up your yellows so we can make those buttons really shiny and we can pop the color on these patches as well. You can do your wand selection tool if you want for this area or you can just simply paint it on at whatever opacity you think looks the most realistic. Now we're going to focus a little bit more on the collar area. We want to take the purpley tones out of here and give a little bit more of the green look. You're going to boost your reds a little bit and your yellows to give it a more neutral shade. We're going to invert the mask again. Control I or Command I if you're on a Mac. Get your opacity, let's say 50% sounds good. And we're going to paint on that area to take those green tones out. If you need to make adjustments to the color balance after you've made the adjustments where you're going to select on them, you can re-pull up the properties panel and make the adjustments to your selections in real time to get it exactly the way you want. Now we're going to come in and do the hair. So we're going to do another color balance. His hair was brown. So we're just going to bump up our reds. I know it changes the entire area, but just we're just paying attention to the hair. What do we want the hair to look like? So play around with your sliders. Magenta, red, and yellow will create this brown look that I'm looking for. Now some of y'all might be saying, Jane, that looks like a wig. It, it doesn't look real. It doesn't look legitimate. But just wait and see. We're going to change the opacity of this layer so that it looks a lot more realistic. Don't forget about the eyebrows. And do zoom in to make sure you have all of your areas covered and everything is seamlessly connected so that you don't tell on yourself. Post-production artists are made and fail by the way that they're able to hide their adjustments. Experiment through your blending modes and make adjustments to your opacity. We're going to do a color overlay with around 30%, between 30 and 40% opacity to give it an overlay look rather than just a solid color balance adjustment. This will give it more of a genuine look. His eyes were brown, about the same shade as his hair and we'll do it a few more times over to make sure that the opacity is at a hundred percent so moving on from here now we're going to do skin this is where it really starts to pop so color balance again just focusing on his skin not on the background not on his outfit not on his hair just on his skin make the adjustment yellow red and magenta 50% opacity, I want to change it to like 5. That way it's a lighter adjustment. White to reveal the mask. And we'll slowly paint on that skin tone. So make sure that we get the most authentic look to his skin pattern. If you go over his skin, hit the X button to switch to the black 
to conceal the mask and then continue on. So black will remove that color and white will reveal. Sometimes it is easier to reveal more than you need and then go back and trim down the areas that you don't need with the conceal brush, the black conceal brush. Now understand that your conceal brush is the same opacity as you had your reveal brush. So if you need to change your opacity, just hit enter and it'll change your opacity. You can change your overall opacity of the layer if it's still too much and you want to do an overall adjustment to give it more of a natural look, use your opacity slider on your levels panel to make that adjustment. We're going to focus on the backdrop. We need to get a little bit of this purple hue out of the backdrop. So we're going to decrease our magenta, increase our yellows, dip down to green until you see those magenta hues disappearing. You can bump your yellows all the way up if you want just to get rid of it and see exactly where those lines are appearing and disappearing and find a good middle ground. When you're doing masking, only focus on the areas that you're going to mask. I know the rest of it looks ridiculous, but once we invert our mask, control I, we can now reveal the areas we wish to reveal. We can bring our opacity slider and our levels layer down until it looks natural. So I hope this video was helpful on putting together all the tips and tricks and techniques we have used in our previous videos. Make sure to tune in next week when we continue with this restoration step forward to finalize this image. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any tips and tricks on a different workflow technique, leave it in the comments below for your fellow post-production artists. Until then, I'm Jane Corley with Pick Visions, Media Arts and Photography. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. See you later, guys!